Thank you. Great to be here. I, I'd like to start with a little story. So the Internet Archive started accepting Bitcoins in uh, 2011 um, as donations. I kind of wish we hadn't sold those 2,700 Bitcoins that we got then uh, for mere $5,000. Um, but by 2012, we were wisening up a bit, and we were getting these donations, and we were paying our employees uh, optionally in Bitcoin. Uh, we set up an ATM, doing these things. And this... Um, uh, I, I was getting interviewed um, by Bitcoin Magazine, um, and the conversation went completely fun and interesting areas. I was getting to talk with this young man, Vitalik, um, and I, it was, I now realize I, I really, it would have been a much better article if I had interviewed him as to his, uh, and gotten that on paper as to what he saw and how he saw this whole thing evolving. But I, I, I think it's actually kind of great that when I wanted to upgrade from Bitcoin-QT, I, I, it, was Bit, it was Vitalik himself that sort of said, yeah, you might want to use these wallets and, and, and the like, and it's uh, worked out pretty well ever, ever, ever since. Um, what I want is a game with many winners. I want a game that evolves. I want a game that isn't monopolized, isn't structured in such a way that there are no room for survive, uh, sur surprises and evolution and coolness. Um, I like games that are fun and inviting and don't do what you expect. The only games that I've ever known like this are fundamentally open. And by open, I mean no centralized points of control. I, I mean decentralized games. And I've had the pleasure in my career to be involved in a couple of them. One is the internet itself. Um, so during the late 1970s and 80s, helped participate in putting this thing uh, together, where if you just played by the protocols, you were welcome. There wasn't a permission-based, you weren't on somebody's platform. It just evolved and, and mutated along in conferences kind of like this called the IETF. And it worked very well. Um, there's another game was the World Wide Web, um, where you could go and set up and uh, just be part of it just by playing by the rules, but then you could bend the rules and you were welcome to go and transform this thing of the World Wide Web for many, many years. Those have been great. And there were, real, there were people that were involved in those, whether it was Vince Cerf and Al Gore and a whole, there are thousands of us that were involved in the internet era of trying to get that whole thing um, to work. I, I think we felt very successful, but we didn't necessarily all get rich. Right? That there was just a, a way of sort of participating in, in this uh, game with many winners, but not everybody was a winner. In the World Wide Web, Tim Berners-Lee actually never became completely uh, wealthy, but he helped make something very, very important happen. I think that this uh, area that this conference is based on is all based around making games with, multi, with many, many winners. And let's do what we can to try to keep it that way because the internet and the World Wide Web have seen some real closures, um, some real collapsing. In, in the early 1990s, there were 40,000 ISPs in the United States, but now there are only really a handful that make any difference at all. So something's gone wrong. Um, now, instead of the World Wide Web where we have lots of blogs and the like, it's collapsed down to Facebook or Twitter. So we have basically a, it's not that the uh, web is failing, it's that people are setting up castles or closed gardens in the open pastures. It's something that I think we really have to uh, watch out for. And when we were looking at sort of the structure of the Internet Archive and what we were doing, um, we thought that we really needed to be involved in um, building a new game. And that's what got us involved in the whole decentralized Bitcoin world and, and beyond. Um, and that's what I'd like to talk about uh, today. So the Internet Archive, I get to uh, work here, this cool place. We bought a church in San Francisco and converted it uh, to be our headquarters. Um, and our mission is universal access to all knowledge. The thing that I signed up for in the Internet is to try to build the Internet into the Library of Alexandria version 2. Could we make it so that all the published works of humankind Books, music, video, web pages, software could be made available to anybody wherever they were forever for free.
How many people here have used the Internet Archive? Oh, yay, fantastic. Uh, the Wayback Machine, probably. Did you know that we do books? No. Did you know we do television? So we, uh, okay, a few people, okay. So anyway, uh, we, we do a lot of these other uh, things on the, uh, at the Internet Archive um, a, as well. We basically are trying to pay, take all of the existing materials, digitize it, and put it online permanently. We're trying to take what's uh, born digital and make it permanently available because the, uh, the average life of a web page is 100 days and it goes away. So we have 300 billion web pages and grows, you know, anyway, a lot. Um, and, but what I'm going to talk about now is the restructuring of the web itself. The web itself is, is being, we, we're being betrayed. The commons is being poisoned. Um, it is, uh, the people that were supposed to be trustable haven't turned out to be, um, and uh, the real wake-up call for me was Snowden um, to go and show that a lot of the people that helped build the, uh, the web had then turned to use it as a massive surveillance tool. Then the last election in the United States, no matter who you think should be elected or not, the actual process of it went very, very wrong that we had uh, people trolling and packaging and manipulating fake news structures were rampant and they're still around. So we have basically structures that aren't working all that well. What I, I suggest we need is a web that's decentralized, a web that has got a peer-to-peer -peer backend on it that uh, preserves some of the values that we wanted but doesn't go backwards, but it's going forwards into the technologies that many of you are really pioneering and putting, putting together. To try to do this, two years ago, uh, we put together a call uh, for the Decentralized Web Summit. Wouldn't it be great if we could build a web that's decentralized? And Tim Berners-Lee and Vince Cerf came, but also the IPFS folks, all sorts of people were building this. When we did this again just last year, a lot of these people had startups that were well-funded. It's on its way. Um, but it's still not altogether there yet. Building decentralized systems is fundamentally harder than building centralized systems, and so we're all trying to get there. And the way that I wanted to, to try to help was to be a convener, but also by going and putting our own stuff online. Could the Internet Archive make itself decentralized? Could the 45 petabytes of the Internet Archive store, the 3 million users a day that are using the Internet Archive, could we make that decentralized? Could we make it so that it could get to it from anywhere and nowhere? Um, and so that is the journey that I thought I'd, I'd, I'd go over today and to list a bunch of the problem areas that we're finding that frankly we could really use help. And it's not just we, use, we as the whole web community, the internet community could use help on a laundry list of projects that I think um, you guys um, already know the answers to many of them. Building a decentralized internet archive, I realize there are, there are about five central magic properties that we're based on that is, I think it's time to just take a little notice of just like, holy crap, the, the idea of content addressability is wild. It's sort of Merlin stuff, that if you just have a hash of a file, you can just call it from the universe and it can come together and you can have it and you can check that you have the right thing. You, at the first time, I think you, never, you don't actually need provenance. You don't know who you got it from. As long as it, it, it checks out with your hash, you know you have it right. This is a big, interesting technological step. The magic of encry encryption public key encryption particularly, um, is you know, woven into all our systems. We say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But just take a moment. It's pretty amazing um, in terms of being able to be, build in a decentralized environment private uh, communications that are extremely difficult uh, to bug. Another that's not quite technology, it's sociology and politics and economics is a well-connected internet, but we're all very much based on it. And we have to do what we can to try to keep it around and alive. Yes, there are these countrywide firewalls going up and there are problems, but in general, we have a well-connected internet. Two more things. Um, the, that we have an ability now to have downloadable code that's safe. 
So it used to be that we had to wait for a um, standards committee to come around to go and invent, and then it gets implemented, and then it gets finally deployed. It's super slow evolution, especially in the web browser space. Can we go and download JavaScript to make my, our web browsers into something else? And you guys are, are, are doing it within the Ethereum contract structures uh, with WebAssembly, which is excellent. Um, but this is magic in the sense that you can evolve much, much faster. Um, and lastly, cryptocurrencies. How do we get beyond the original sin of the web, which is advertising? How do we do that? How do we make it so you can make money by publishing on the internet? Right now, you have to pretty much sign up to Amazon or iTunes or something like that to go and host your stuff. Can we go and use cryptocurrencies? Uh, and I think that's the, a big opportunity. Okay, I'm gonna do things, something that they always suggest not to. It actually made people in, this, uh, in the conference very nervous. I'm gonna try to do a live demo of a decentralized internet archive. If this works, you're gonna have to applause. Okay, don't applaud yet because it doesn't work yet. But let, let, okay, I, I did try this um, a month ago in front of a group and too many people went to this website before and things crashed, it was kind of a problem. Um, so don't go there yet, here I go. This is the Internet Archive website. So just normal archive.org, sort of see what it is. What I'm gonna uh, try to show is a decentralized version of this that um, uh, is, is a lot like this. So you're gonna say, well, how are you gonna show that anything new has happened? I'm going to go and uh, turn on the JavaScript console and show how much mechanism is going on. So when I uh, change this to dweb.archive.org, um, it's going to bootstrap all sorts of systems, WebTorrent, IPFS, GUN, YJS, all in JavaScript, not just as clients, but as servers of these, um, and then bootstrap all of that and then start getting all of the assets to be the Internet Archive site. Okay, wish me luck. Okay, here. Okay, they booted up, all right. Okay, we've got, now we got the uh, banners up. Okay, so now we have uh, the basic home page uh, up in terms of all of these images. Let's try going to get uh, a movie. So here, again, it's, it's going and getting a lot of assets uh, of the Prelinger archives, uh, which is old uh, archival movies. These are old educational films that, anyway, they're, they're completely dorky and wonderful um, and popular. And so let's, let's go for health, your posture. Uh, you know, you gotta stand up straight. They're gonna tell you how. And, okay, this is going to bring in things using IPFS, GUN, and YJS, and then the actual video, if it works. Okay, we've got one peer, five peers now. So it's downloading. Uh, it's five peers coming in. Score! Okay, so, so this is basically trying to weave peer to peer into the web itself, but there's all sorts of well. other magic the here. Of the party that everyone's been looking for oh, I know that you're all gonna really wanna go see this movie to make sure you're standing up straight and, uh, uh, and the like. Um, um, but WebTorrent has, uh, was doing a lot of this and so it's uh, not only downloading, but this uh, web browser is uploading this file al already. Can we go and make this smoothly easy to do? And how do we get the bootstrapping system such that this can happen in censorship uh, uh, in a censorship resistant way. The Internet Archive is completely blocked in China, for instance, and sometimes blocked in Russia and occasionally in India, and blah, 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 blah. Can we go and keep things uh, up and available um, through these technologies? And I think so, uh, but we're not quite there yet. Um, so what's the benefits of, of going through all of this work? Right? We have ability to go into our websites, our home pages, or whatever. Well, I'd say there are, are, are four big ones. One is we can make things more reliable. They can be archivable, it's like Git, it's, it's, you can roll things back, uh, you could fork, all sorts of nice things. Uh, censorship resistant and even works in poorly connected zones like, say, uh, a lot of the United States. Um, it offers more privacy. Um, one thing that was, that was really spooky to me as the, uh, in the Stone's revelations is the GCHQ, uh, the, the NSA of the uh, United Kingdom, 
stood in front of the WikiLeaks website and recorded all the IP addresses that came in, and it turned over a large number of those to the NSA for further whatever they wanted to do. Um, in the papers, we don't know what the NSA did with that, but the idea of people being rounded up for what it is they've read and had bad things happen to them is had a very long, bad tradition in the library world. So this is sort of, you know, puts a big red flag of the idea of just getting in trouble for what you're reading is not good enough. It's not how the world's supposed to work. So let's build a better system. Two, two more things is we can build a business model that works better than an advertising, um, and uh, we can make it fun and malleable. I think we could make a system that works a whole lot better and, and does better. Okay, here's my laundry list of 13 projects that has been evolving out of the Decentralized Web Summit and, and the upcoming in the summer, next summer, the D, D uh, web camp in San Francisco. Um, these are areas that can really use some help. For instance, naming in the whole decentralized web world. If we're going to move beyond DNS, how should that work? That's actually a, probably a very good place uh, for registries and ledgers and, and, and the like. How do we do key management uh, on the D-Web? This is really tricky. Um, it's um, uh, Dimitri, uh, excuse me, uh, Dietrich uh, of Mozilla. Um, talked yesterday of wanting to build better key management into the browsers. Let's help them. Let's try to figure out what we should do to be able to do that in such a way that it works well for normal people. Identity, reputation, how to do mutable data at scale. So with uh, BitTorrent, we implemented BitTorrent on all of our materials. So we have 45 petabytes of materials available in BitTorrent, which is kind of cool. Um, but it's all static. Uh, and if any of those files change, if you don't get the new torrent, it will go and just continuously download, thinking that it uh, didn't get a, uh, a, a proper version. So we have problems by having things be more mutable than the BitTorrent or IPF worlds currently work. How do we do archiving in the decentralized web? Do we need incentivized structures? I'm hoping that we can get um, uh, ISPs to go and make their own cached decentralized web nodes, even if it's just to serve to their con con customers. So it's basically a, a content distribution network that's open access. So it's not Akamai that only the big boys can, Netflix can go and put in, that anybody's materials just get faster by their getting out there. So the Internet Archive can play a role, but can we have lots of different organizations play a role in archiving and caching uh, materials? Reader privacy is notoriously hard. If Zuko says that privacy is sort of not easy to get OPSEC uh, absolute, then geez, what, what, what are mere mortals supposed to be able to do here? Um, but we can make progress. Uh, we can make it so at least the GCHQ attack on WikiLeaks readers is, is much more difficult uh, to do. Takedowns in the era of hashes rather than URLs, what does that look like? Um, and should they be avoided? Are they opt-in? Is it kind of like spam? How, does it, how is it going to work? Another row of challenges. Again, I'm, what I'm trying to do is, is, is trying to excite you guys to, to help out and say, I think that I've got an idea on how to help on, say, web beyond advertising. Um, I, I've got a puzzle for you. It's a crypto puzzle that I've even posed to Whit Diffie and he hasn't come back with an answer, is can you make a D purchase on the D web? What, does I, what do I mean by that? Let, that my kid is a, is a guitarist, he, he, he plays songs, and so he, he has an album. What if he wants to make a decentralized website that has his album on it? The first one's free, you can just play it, but the others he wants to sell, so he wants to sell for some amount of money. What I imagine is we would encrypt those songs with a key, and then, if, then it would go and advertise on the decentralized web page, put a coin in the slot, and then you'll get the key to go and unlock the, the saw. Right, you could go and rip them off by going and you know, unencrypting and then passing it to your friends or whatever, but that's always the case. But at least if you wanted to play the game, can we make it work without any Amazon or iTunes or even an escrow agent? And I can't figure out how to do that because it requires having a secret key that lives, say, in a public contract. 
And then I don't know enough about zero uh, knowledge proofs to be able to figure out whether that works. But anyway, if we can crack that, then you could feel confident putting a coin in the slot and knowing you're going to be able to get uh, some decentralized content uh, that's for pay. Can we make the decentralized web work in the browser itself? I'd say one of the cool things that these guys did in the uh, area of this decentralized internet archive that you just saw is there was no extension. There was no new browser. It, was, it works on your phone. And actually, now, go ahead, please do. Go to dweb.archive.org and just try it out. Because you're going to be basically using everybody else that's here to be going and starting to access the Internet Archive site. Um, so can we make it work in browsers completely unchanged? And I think the answer is kind of. But we're going to need some help from the browser companies themselves. But can we really get going? Storage in the decentralized web. Is it going to be Filecoin? Is it going to be the Internet Archive? How are we going to do uh, larger scale storage than what's ac actually on a blockchain? Uh, governance in the D-Web. I'd say uh, this community is thinking harder about governance than anything I've ever seen in terms of the, the whole DAO thing is terrific, that we need many models to be played with. What are we going to do about the D-Web and the, the standards that are kind of evolve in that space and who can help? And lastly, can we define our decentralized terms? I mean, I'm old enough to, to, to remember E, when E was supposed to mean something, um, or open. Remember, o open seemed to have some definition. At least Stallman had some real definitions of what free software meant. He had principles. Um, and I think we need the same kinds of things around decentralization, or it could just become a marketing term that is just wasted. And we sort of would have built up a lot of goodwill around a term that will mean as much as organic. Um, and so if we can go and do something in that area, um, I think it would be a very good long-term investment. And of course, rethinking the UI and UX, because I don't know about you, but I, I always have these cool things that I want my wife to use. And it just, if it's not actually working, well, she'll just sort of, she's my good QA department. It's like not good enough um, to, to, to survive. So let's go and make the D-Web uh, a, a fun and interesting area to, to play in. To help, I would suggest what, we, what I've been doing is I've been trying out the puzzle. If you're driving around or in a shower, blank but decentralized. So just try it out on your favorite piece of tech. I think Google Docs is freaking magic. I, it is an amazing technology, but it's creepy. So anything that's creepy, I want to go and think, can I make blank but decentralized? Google Docs, but decentralized. Google Maps, but decentralized. Slack, but decentralized. Twitter, but decentralized. Facebook, but decentralized. Um, uh, we just bought a Tesla, which is kind of cool. Um, and it is like driving a phone. It, it, it is really strange. It is a connected device. It, it, uh, the company knows everywhere we are. It, it is. It is creepy. Um, so how do you make cars that are as cool as a Tesla, but decentralized? It is absolutely possible uh, to do. And one thing you might want to try out is your own thing that you're doing. And I know if you're doing things in decentralized uh, tech, you say, oh, well, I'm already doing that. But maybe your homepage isn't. Maybe your blog isn't. Um, so how do we go and make all of this uh, work? I want to just say thank you to Mitra and the Internet Archive uh, engineers that made this demo all work, and thank God it did. Uh, WebTorrent, IPFS, Gun, YJS, and others have really put in a lot over the last year to make this work, and they're continuing to make it so that it uh, work in, in censorship resistance and for mass bas back uploading and replicating petabytes of information. Let's build the web we want, and the only way we're going to do that uh, is together. I'm hoping that this uh, was somewhat useful and I look forward to talking with you. Any questions? Was I really that unprovocative? Rooster, uh, this isn't like a question per se, but uh, I work with IPFS on a like almost daily basis, and my company and I have 
I, I believe solved already some of those 13 challenges Ooh. that you, so my question is, would we be able to like talk to you? After? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> and, and you can talk to any of a number of people because it's not just me, it's now yeah. groups of people and we're trying to basically put these together. So yes, if you have real clues as to how to make progress on these, um, they are this sort of the outstanding list. Fantastic, thank you. Yeah, uh, great talk, thank you so much. Um, I'm wondering how you think about incentivization for obscure data, stuff that, like from the 50s, these movies that probably nobody will ever really look at. How do you keep those around? Um, how, do we, how do we do deal with the long-term preservation of stuff that the long tail, right? The, you know, the, the Hollywood movies are gonna take care of themselves just fine. Uh, how do you deal with the long tail? Um, I think it's by making compatible systems that are easy enough to use that even libraries know how to use. The cool thing about libraries is they're paid to give stuff away. It's about a $12 billion a year industry in the United States. It's about a $21 billion a year industry in the world. Um, they just haven't modernized. So the Internet Archive, I think of, is pretty modern, um, but uh, the, the library system hasn't modernized. But boy, are they up for it. So when um, the last election happened, um, uh, I got worried about being in the United States and said, gosh, let's accelerate this, make copies in multiple places. So the Internet Archive has got two copies in the United States, partial copy in Amsterdam and a partial copy in Alexandria, Egypt. For real, actually, it's kind of cool. Um, but we also then said, how about Canada? Let, what, what, we can, what can we do there? So I went around to our Canadian friends and they said, sure, sign us up. We're up for, for spending money in our universities to go and help back up parts, if not all, the whole thing. But I didn't have the tech for them. Well, you know, the idea of having just dead, dumb storage someplace is good, but not great. You really need continuous usability. So they wanted to go and have copies of parts of the collections, but also serve them. That's, I think, the opportunity of a decentralized internet archive. So if we did this, there's plenty of money for keeping, oh, I don't know, mere exabytes alive, which basically is everything written plus basically pu published. We're 45 petabytes of, of d data and we're small. So it's, it's, I'd say the long tail, we can count on that part of the system as long as it's compatible with the thriving commercial system. The library world is difficult to go and drive forward technologies, but it can ride other people's technologies. It's an idea. Yeah, thank you. Actually, re sorry, regarding this, just uh, this question, I yeah. built a system at the Ethereum San Francisco Hackathon. It's called LaserBot, which is a decentralized optical storage system precisely for this long-term archiving. Sign that man up. <laughs> Great. We, we, we need more ideas on this, and I think it's, a lot of these things are bottom-up. If we just wait for the Library of Congress to do something, it's going to be a long fricking time. So it's going to be bottom up, and that sounds like uh, uh, there's Freedom Box, there's a bunch of other uh, boxes that people have, have tried to make. Let's make them useful and used. Um, yes? Uh, your answer about moving the archive, uh, thank you, uh, in the Trump moment was part of my, answer is part of my question. The question is, in the Trump moment, ah! <laughs> uh, what projects, maybe that you didn't even mention here, should we be focused on? Slash, what norms give you pause? What projects should we be focused on now? Um, there's a lot more excitement around um, the nonprofit sector than there was even 10 years ago when people were just trying to make some crappy app and you know buy a house for cash or whatever. Just ugh. Um, so there's a lot more interest in these uh, the EFFs. Uh, public knowledge, um, Wikipedia, Internet Archive. Um, our biggest donations from uh, ever, other than from, from me, um, have been from the crypto world, actually. The Pineapple Fund gave us $2 million. Ethereum Foundation gave us 100000 Handshake gave us 100000 uh, Amis Go gave us 30000 We've gotten a lot of support, actually. So that's, uh, I guess, that's my shilling uh, moment here. Um, but it, there is interest in these spaces, and I, I really feel, and I, you know, I was invited here. I think it's kind of cool because we're really from a non-commercial space. Uh, we are for the public good, and that that's being involved in the conversations. I think is a really good, uh, good sign. 
um, in terms of what to actually do is I've got a list of 13 things that if we solve those, I think that we can crack through and make an awful lot of the websites we use decentralized and you wouldn't even know it. That would be the, the best case is like, oh yeah, of course it's decentralized. It's like, of course it's HTTPS. Um, all right, oh, of course it's, and, and just how do we go and make it, it all just go decentralized? Uh, my question is kind of two-part. You mentioned earlier about China and not being able to access. I wondered yeah. if the dweb.archive.org is accessible in any way in a place like China that has restrictions. Not yet. China is actually really difficult to crack. Uh, it'll probably be easier in Turkey uh, or Iran or some of the other places that were blocked. Um, I think, no, we're, we're up in, in, in Iran now. Um, so there's, uh, uh, but because you have to go and get rid of every um, access to the DNS, for instance. Um, and that is challenging. So uh, China blocks us largely by messing with our DNS and by blocking things going to our IP addresses. Um, so we don't have that yet. And it's a lot of the bootstrapping problem. And that, I think, is going to require either browser um, uh, manufacturer cooperation or extensions. Okay, that was part of my second question. When you mentioned going beyond DNS, I, I just wonder if you could expound more on kind of what you're um, referring to. Mitra, who's been working on this, is, has been uh, making a cool system to go and make it so that if you have dweb in your domain name, dweb.archive.org, it mutates that into a dwebme slash arc slash archive org or something like that. And it'll do it for any prepend like that. So if you have dweb in any domain name, it'll swap these around. And it then looks it up in a, in a sequence of uh, databases to find who has the authority for that part of the subtree. Is there so, something we can read more about? Yeah, it's all, it's all open source. But I'm not sure it's the perfect thing. But people are trying um, and to, to, to basically build a sort of DNS that's open uh, and resilient and uh, doesn't have some of the problems we saw in the last time okay. uh, around. All right, thank you. Hello. And, and whenever I should get the yank, uh, please yank me. But yes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, who, this, um, who can upload content to the Internet Archive? You can. And, and, and how is that content governed or curated? It, can it get deleted somehow? Who is? Okay. In the platform. So how do you upload to the Internet Archive and can it get deleted somehow? Is that the question? So on archive.org, there's a button, upload. Please hit it. Please hit it now. Just hit, hit it. Hit, hit upload. And just try uploading something. It's a little clunky. It's worse than what you, but it supports YouTube. It supports videos and books and all sorts of things and makes it into lots of different formats and keep, tries to keep them alive forever. But we do take things down um, and we do under US law. We try to push back. Um, but we are uh, under U.S. law. So if people make a valid copyright complaint and prove it, then we will um, uh, make it not available uh, publicly. If you want to go and use the archive at scale, use s3.archive.org. We're trying to be bug compatible with Amazon.com's uh, uh, S3 cloud, s3.amazon.com, so you can use your bucket and upload things at scale. Please let us know if you're gonna do many terabytes or many petabytes, but we're, we're very interested. So we, you, that's how all of the materials, we get 23 terabytes a day coming into the Internet Archive. Um, all of it comes through our S3 implementation. So you can use S3, really easy, um, or just go to the website and hit upload. And, and, and please do. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, thank you for the talk. I thought there were a lot of um, you know, really great oh. points that you made. I guess this, this is the last question. So um, in, in terms of you know, just trying to get more people. Oh, can, can it be the second to last question? Okay, go. Sorry, yeah. Um, so more people from around the world accessing the same internet, trying to not move into this two internet parallel that's emerging with you know, nations like China kind of having a separate internet. Yes. Um, so how can we prevent that with better interfaces slash what could we do to, uh, like you said earlier, you have to take some things down based upon U.S. law. That seems to be, you know, both a good thing in terms of preventing uh, malicious content, but then also uh, a bad thing in terms of potentially having a burning down of the Alexandria uh, Library yeah. moment. Like, how do we prevent that? Uh, I... I'm not sure I've talked about this in public. Why we're blocked in China, as best I can tell. So um, 
In general, company, countries will come to us and go and say, this particular thing is not legal in Germany or whatever under our expansive copyright terms. And so if, if they basically make a good case that it's illegal in their country, then we'll block it for users in that country. And that has allowed us to survive very well. Um, the U.S. is actually pretty liberal, unless you talk about child porn or almost anything dealing with Muslims. Um, but otherwise, the United States allows uh, uh, a lot to uh, be uh, put out there. In China, there were some uploaded videos to the Internet Archive. And they came and said, you have to take them down. And we said, are they illegal in China? And they said, yes, those are illegal in China. We said, fine, we'll block them in China. And they said, that's not good enough. You have to block them for the whole world. And um, because they said that, we said, we can't do that. That's not how we operate. And they said, okay. Ka-chunk. So 45 petabytes went offline, including um, millions of books digitized by the Department of, of Education in China um, that have been done as a collaborative project. So I, I think we have to, um, for those of us that work within the governments and the like, is we just have to make sure that we're not overstepping our bounds and allow some of this uh, experiment to continue. Um, that's, I bet, that's the only thing I can think of, and make multiple copies. All right, Brewster. I, 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 no? He's going to hate no. me, so go fast. Okay, I'll be really fast. Uh, this is the same question I asked you the last time you gave this speech, which is, if advertising is the root of all evil and getting people to pay for it will fix it, then what do we do about the fact that we have a hugely unequal world and uh, the ability to pay is very, very widely dispersed and that all the stuff you pay for right now is just as abusive as the advertising stuff Netflix buys on you, Apple locks you down, and so on. Bah! Damn, uh, I, I think I've got to go now. Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, how, do you, how do you have payments work in sliding scale structures and, um, and have an, a, a, an equal world when there's vast inequality in wealth? Shit, I don't know. Um, I think we need a lot more experiments going on than the few that we've got going. And I just want to see more things happen out there. Uh, it, monocultures don't work very well. Advertising-based systems end up with uh, newspapers, uh, television, uh, Facebook, Google. Um, so that's not good enough. I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a generally a free-for-all kind of guy. Uh, there's ways of making that work. Um, I'd just like to see some more tools in our, in our toolbox. Um, sorry to not be more satisfying. Thank you very much. We're around for the rest of the day.